What do you do for a living? I'm an entrepreneur building a business. Um, so starting from scratch. And what? Finance. Okay. Uh, so how do you... Okay. Um, we already have points to address, and this is just the first thing the girl said out of her mouth. So... The problem is that many women in the modern world, what they think is that if they're a strong, independent woman, that is what is attractive to men. So if they're an entrepreneur working on their own business in finance, they'll be more attractive to men. But it's not what makes women attractive. Solipsism states that women have trouble understanding things from male perspective. They see things only from their perspective. And this is an example of solipsism here. The girl has literally spent her whole life um, under the impression that um, having your own business and being strong, independent, and successful is what's attractive to men. That's implied by her initial statement already. Okay, let's continue. How are you going to find balance in life? That's what I'm looking to create. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. I've never had any a male figure be direct with me of what I'm doing wrong. Um, okay, so here I can be the male figure that tells you what you're doing wrong. And Kevin, by the question, is implying how can she find balance in her life. Um, the idea is that he's asking her, um, how will you balance family with your career, right? And she's saying no male figure has ever been direct with her. Well, right, because men are just trying to get laid, so they lie. Um, but here is the truth. Um, men don't value your career. Men don't find your career attractive. So if you believe that your career is what makes you attractive, you're going to have a bad time. So I honestly feel like I've just been kind of like in lost trying to figure it all out. And so that's why I wanted to jump on because I'm... So she's lost. But here's the implication. I have had relationship after relationship after relationship and none of these men have committed to me. Why? Well... The reason why has to do with your behavior, right? With your choices. And unfortunately, your choices have consequences. So if you make the wrong decisions as a woman and you're now you're past 35 with no husband and you, you have cats and a career, well, I mean, you only have yourself to blame. Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. My name is Helios here for another reaction video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe, hitting all for notifications. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, please give me a five-star review, give me a follow. If you'd like me to comment on a video or compilation, please send the link to the Helios blog at gmail.com. Here we go. Or what I'm doing wrong. Doing what the outcome do you want? I do want... I want a marriage, I want children. Well, if you want marriage and children, then you're going to need to do what men find attractive. And what men find attractive is fit, feminine, submissive, cooperative, and loyal in a bedroom fun manner. Notice how none of that is strong, independent, doesn't need a man, and over the age of 35. And here are a few other things, okay, that some men uh, don't like. I mean, the obvious one is children. But again, it's sort of implied in the bedroom fun loyalty, because if a, if a girl has a child with another man, she's not loyal to you, she's loyal to that man. And the other one is pets. If you have giant attack dogs or 10 cats, well, men are not going to find you attractive. Many men. I want to get married and having children is priority for me as well. Right. And this is, this is the sort of phrase that you'll hear from women past the age of 35 or, you know, I mean, women hit the wall at different rates, right? So, um, you know, 28 plus is generally when women start to say this, right? Now I'm looking to settle down. I have had my fun, but now I need to be serious about life and stuff like that. And the problem is that the handsome, attractive, successful men that you wanted, they're back in your 20s where you left them. Those men that you didn't please or that you didn't secure the commitment from, they're gone. They're not coming back. Now, here is something else that I want to say. And many women fall into this trap. They actually go too high above what they're actually uh, able to attract. So here's what I mean. In general, women are two points less attractive than they think they are. Okay? So if you're two points less attractive than you think you are, what that means is, as a woman, you can only get men that are two points higher than you for, you know, uh, 
you know, a relationship, uh, children, live-in relationship, etc. So if a woman thinks she's an eight and seeks a ten, she's going to only be able to get bedroom fun from that ten. Because the girl is actually a six, but she thinks she's an eight, okay? But if women were realistic about their own attractiveness on the dating market, then they would understand what kind of man they could actually go for, right? So you can't go for a 10 out of 10 man if you're only a 6 out of 10 woman. You'll only be able to secure bedroom fun. You'll not be able to secure a relationship, a long-term live-in partner, or anything like that. How many children do you want? Two children. Two or three. What state do you live in? I live in California, Los Angeles. Oh, well, the cost of living is extremely high in California. So here's what Kevin is getting at, right? Um, what she wants is unattainable, right? So she's going to want a man who is stronger and makes more money than her, right? And who pays all the bills. And she wants two or three children, uh, but she's also past the wall, right? So this is just unrealistic standards and with these unrealistic standards come the inability to get a man right which is why the girl doesn't understand what she's doing wrong well, what she's doing wrong is she's going after the wrong man um so she's going to have to drastically reduce the standards also uh very often kevin on his shows will say stuff like um do you want to pay significant bills when you're married well <clears throat> most women will say no but a girl like this, she doesn't have a choice. She's not going to be able to get the kind of man that could support uh, a family in California because she's just too old. She's used up too much of her time and a man that has that ability to provide is simply going to go to a younger woman. So she is uncompetitive and is going to have to settle for a merely average man. Um, maybe in her youth when she was 20, she would have been an eight out of 10. But now that she's past the wall, she's, pro she's a five at best. Um, and probably she has many masculine behaviors to be successful in her, you know, in her business um, of finance, right? And so uh, that also lowers the, the, you know, the rating scale. So probably this girl's like a four or a three out of ten. And so the best she can possibly get is a five out of ten. And that wouldn't be settling, even though in her mind it is settling because maybe she's slept with a ten once in her twenties. Um, it's not settling because at her current level, that is the best she can get. And if she doesn't get that, she's going to be alone with pets. <clears throat> Why do you want to get married? I've always had the desire. I do realize when I was younger, it was coming from, when I look back, because I've done personal development, it was coming from an abandonment wound. That's not why. It's not abandonment for a woman to want marriage and children. That's your biological drive. <laughs> but it's funny that she says an abandonment wound. Okay, so, so what? Um, is she implying that there was no father in the house? Well, here's the thing. Uh, fathers keep their daughters out of the streets and they keep their uh, sons out of prison, right? So if there was no father figure in the house, it's no surprise that she's ended up as a strong, independent woman doesn't need a man. Because who does she have to listen to? All she can listen to is the modern religion, which is womanism. And womanism teaches women wrong, as we know. It leads to insanely negative outcomes. And that's, that's where she is right now. I've taken time to like heal that piece. And now I realize that I do want to build something with somebody that I can have a soulmate connection and also... Now I want to build something with someone. Not before when I was young and attractive. Now I do. When I was young, I was having my fun. I was strong and independent. I was free to do whatever I want. Raw, raw womanism. But now I'm ready to settle down. And won't you please help me find uh, a beta male to take care of me? But this, this girl might be so entitled that she can't even find a beta male. She can't find any man because no man rises to her standards because her amalgam. Okay, so let, let's go into the amalgam here because, okay, so first let me say the point. Her amalgam is too strong. So here's the amalgam. Every man that a woman sleeps with has certain qualities. And because of women's hypergamy, what they want is every new man to beat the best qualities of all the previous men. So you can imagine, if there's one or two men, it's very possible for a new man to beat that guy. But when there's 10 men, 15 men, 20 men, right? Because you have to think about it. The girl's probably been active since she was 16, conservatively estimating that she's had one partner every year till the age of 28 or let's say 30. 
um, or 35 is like what? Um, 21 or something? No, uh, am I doing the math wrong? 19? Anyway, let's let's just estimate it's 20, okay? So at an end count of 20, which is a very conservative estimate, by the way, um, at, at the age of 35, um, the new guy is going to have to beat 21 men and also be a provider. It's literally impossible, right? That amalgam, that fusion of the best qualities of all the previous men is impossible to beat. And this is why women need to get married and have children early, because then they have no one to compare to. Their own nature doesn't destroy them, right? See, whereas men, every relationship, every experience gives them experience that they carry forward to the next uh, relationship. Uh, and by building this experience, they become more attractive. As women gain experience, they don't, like experience is a nice way of putting it. What they actually gain is baggage. They gain damage. And they gain the inability to to respect and to see that man as superior. And as a result of this, um, as a result of this, the woman is unable to be happy. So she should have gotten married earlier, a lot earlier. And that's why mothers and grandmothers and, and the whole culture and religion, it all used to teach women properly. Get married when you're young, have kids when you're young, so that they didn't cause this problem. See, for men, it's not the same. A man could be 35, it could be 40, it could be 45, he can still get married, he can still have children. It's because as a man gains an experience, he becomes more attractive. And this is especially true if he keeps himself in shape, right? Look at Kevin. Kevin's like 56 in this uh, video, 55. Look at how he looks. Like, he's still attractive. But a 55-year-old woman, no chance like the 25-year-old the equivalent. So be a power couple with and, and How a couple? Oh no, she's implying an equal relationship. No, no, uh, equal relationships don't exist. So what she's saying is she wants a beta male to dominate. So when a girl says she wants an equal relationship, what she's actually saying is she wants to dominate the relationship. Well, you're not going to find a guy who earns more than you who's a beta male, especially if you are a professional woman. It's not going to happen. And change the trajectory of my family because we don't come from um, marriage. I want to show that as an example for my kids. Well, I mean, your family clearly doesn't come from an example of marriage because you're 35 plus and making exactly the same mistakes as the other people in your family. It's too late to be considering marriage now. Now the standards are insanely dropped compared to what you could have gotten when you were young and beautiful. How long do you watch my programs or anything like that? Off and on, not too much. Uh oh. Uh, well, what do you think I'm going to? What do you think I'm about to say right now? I want you to give it to me difficult, like hard, because well, I'm I. Not giving, I'm just saying this: the myth of the power couple is something that was marketed to black women. Right. So Kevin is saying that it's cultural brainwashing. I've already talked about how womanism is just a brainwashing scheme, right, to uh, destroy the nuclear family and to. Um, effectively, what womanism is actually for is taxing women. Uh, so that instead of taxing one family, you can tax two separated or divorced families, right? Uh, and the idea is that the government makes more money off of taxes by uh, by ruining the culture uh, that used to exist, right? But it's it's not it's not powerful, and and power couple doesn't actually exist. As I said, an equal relationship implies that the woman dominates the relationship. But if the woman dominates the relationship, she can never appreciate the man. If she can't appreciate the man, there is no relationship. There is no marriage. It'll end in divorce like 99% of the time. What is a power couple? I mean, we're partners? No. Um, are you asking me, sorry, or is that a That's a power couple. That means we're partners. You have two or three children, which one? Okay, so as I said, there is no such thing as two equal rulers. There is one dominant ruler and one submissive follower. It's either you as the man as the dominant ruler or you as the submissive follower. There is no equal relationship. An equal relationship means you as the man are the submissive follower. Okay, just so you know. Do you want your kids to be able to go to college if they want to? Yes. Okay, so, I mean, already, I, I mean, we've already talked about it. 
in order to be able to afford college, in order to be able to afford extracurriculars, in order to be able to afford all this stuff, you're going to need a lot of money. I think it's like 500,000 per child or something to live like an upper middle class uh, existence. So how can she as a 35 year old woman get that? And the answer is she can't. There is no guy that's going to take a girl like this who has already wasted her time ruined her ability to pair bond and hurt her, her biology to the point that she can't have children with a guy her age anymore. Healthy biological children. So he is going to go to a better option, a younger woman. It's, it's really sad, actually. Do you want to travel nationally and internationally with your children? Both. Uh, do, do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant and married with your first child? Yes, you I can. You won't have to work to pay significant bills when you're pregnant. So here is the idea, okay? Most women don't want to pay when they're pregnant, uh, but most women can't find a guy to, uh, you know, to marry who can pay all the bills. So they usually do end up working and resenting the husband for it because, you know, it's all over social media that, you know, women are just jet setting, doing whatever they want, right? Um, but in the modern world, most women will have to work. Um, and it's because of womanism, right? It didn't used to be the case before one salary from a man could provide for everything. But nowadays that isn't the case because in the modern world, it's expected for there to be two separate households due to divorce, right? It's expected. It's even planned for. It's even rewarded. So like this is a pipe dream, right? Um, and when she says she would pay, uh, she she would want to work while she's pregnant and stuff. No, most women don't want to. They're kind of forced to. But if a woman wants the highest possible chance of not having to, she would have to be wise in her early twenties and try to get with a guy that could provide. Oh, significant bills? No. Significant, yeah. I, like, I would you like have to pay significant bills right now. Okay, so what? Percentage, what what uh, percentage of the family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for for an entire lifetime? She's not going to say higher than 20%. And most women wouldn't even want to be responsible for 20%. Most women don't want to be responsible for anything. So they want you as the man to provide everything. Now here's the thing. The amount of men in the global population that can provide everything, or let's just say in the West, is like 5 to 1%. Okay, they can provide everything, as, uh, providing that sort of lifestyle that women desire. It's actually a very rare man that can do that, right? And so, as a result of this, um, most women have insanely unrealistic expectations of what they want out of a relationship, out of a husband. Uh, and especially true of women that are older, you know, past the wall, 28 plus, um, single mothers... Um, or just women that are masculine in demeanor and womanist in general. It's very surprising, actually, how um, entitled and delusional many of these women are. I would say 30 to 40 percent. Okay, That's a lot. 40 percent means if you stop working for any reason, you stop bringing in income for any reason, the family is at serious risk. Serious risk, meaning you will not be able to stop working for under any circumstances. Now, here's the thing. Um, many women who say they're strong and independent, empowered, whatever, they say that they would be okay with this, that they even that they actively want this and that they're empowered to want this and that um, womanism has given them the freedom, has liberated them to be able to do this. But if you actually look at the happiness of, of modern women, you'll see that Especially the women that are working jobs like men, you know, engineers, lawyers, doctors, etc. Their mental health and their happiness is extremely low. And the reason is because most women don't want to live like a man. They want to have a high standard life, but not have to work. And that they're forced to work makes them resent their husband. It's just the way it is. Is that what you're saying? That's a good question. Um, no, ideally, no. Because 
This is why I say that women should be wise in order to be successful in life. Because if women are not actively working from the age of 18 to get married to a man of value, they will never actually have the chance to have the life that they want and they're setting themselves and their future children up for misery. All right, let's go on to our Reddit post here. Uh, yeah. My fiancé came home after a weekend with her friends and said she wanted to break up after four years. So, some backstory. My fiancé and I have been together for four years. We moved in together about four months in with some friends and, uh, and then they got their own home to rent. Got engaged in a year and a half ago and everything has been going great. She bought every animal we have. Three dogs, three cats, a hundred fish. Every dog was a surprise gift and I love each of my dogs even more than my siblings. They are my babies. Alright, so my fiancé has been going out with the drinking girls for the last couple of weeks. Uh-oh, red flag. So guys, you cannot allow your girl to go on girls' night out because she will be tempted. She will sleep with another man. You cannot allow her to do that. So that's one of the relationship rules. No girls' night out. Um... Last Sunday, she comes home after pottering all week with her friends and says she's not happy anymore and wants to leave but feels trapped. Exactly. So the girl thinks that the grass is greener because all these guys are giving her attention and her girls are living their hot girl summer, not realizing that by sleeping around like this, they're ruining their ability to pair bond and they're actually ruining the lives of their future children and themselves. They don't realize that. So this is why you need to prevent the problem, right? She says she still loves me, but doesn't love this anymore. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Also known as, I met an alpha male who I think is more attractive than you. I'm going to branch swing. I got angry and sad and asked if there was someone else, and she freaked out on me. And now she took all her rings off and, and took off the relationship status on Facebook. Right, so the girl has found an alpha male who's showing her interest, and now she wants to branch swing. She wants to get that guy, and not the, the guy she's currently with. So again, guys... If you allow your girl to do relationship-destroying things, don't be surprised when she destroys the relationship. I just don't understand how we can have four years together building a family with our animals, and why buy all these animals and make me fall in love and trap us both? I'm probably going to keep the house because the landlord only knows me, and that means I probably keep all the animals or most of them. And she even said that to me, but she doesn't want to leave because of that reason. What should I do? I told her I wanted to work things out, but she keeps saying she needs distance and time. Please help. So... Distance and time means she wants to sleep with another guy. Um, and this this buying dogs and pets and stuff is just impulsive, right? It feels good in the moment and, and then the taking care of them comes later, right? Um, so it just goes to show, guys, if you allow your girl to do relationship-destroying behaviors, that's what's going to happen. So you can't allow it, right? And if she refuses to do the things, like t to stop doing the things that destroy relationships, well, I mean, there's no relationship then. She's not your girl. All right, top comment, let's see. What is this long comment? Okay, anyway, I'll read it. This could be in a range anywhere from getting cold feet to cheating happened. She could be in a panic about the future, thinking this past weekend's having free fun with the friends is the opposite of being married. It is. She could have met someone, not necessarily cheated or even thought of cheating, but more of a look at someone attractive and thought, hey, there are other people out there. Do I really want to be tied to just one forever? Exactly. Like, even if you're a great guy, even if you're a very attractive superior man, the girl's still going to think that the grass is greener on the other side because she's seen your weaknesses. She hasn't seen that guy's weaknesses, right? She could have met someone of interest or attraction that might be a grass is greener thing, as I said, going on with her, wants to call it off before anything happens, or wants to see if something could happen. Indeed, she could have already done something that would be against the relationship rules with you, also, uh, also known as some kind of cheating. Usually when someone snaps and freaks out, it's a defense mechanism. That could play into any of these scenarios I listed above, from something simple if she feels she wasted your time, or something major if she already cheated. So guys, I'm telling you, if she gets cold feet like this, um, women cheating is premeditated, right? So she probably went on these girls' nights out, actively encouraging these men to, to come at her so that she could cheat. It's not like a, you know, it happened out of the blue kind of thing. Or it could be because she's thinking your mind went directly to cheating when it had nothing to do with cheating. The realization that you could instantly not trust her could be enough to put her on the defense. Anyways, the issue is that there's zero way of knowing anything unless there's communication. That's not happening right now. Maybe it could happen soon. This could be a cold feet, hiccup, tiny bump in your relationship that a lot of people go through before giant life changes. Or this could be a serious dis uh, life-destroying scenario. But the good news, this happened prior to your actual marriage. So, guys, I'm telling you, 
If your girl is doing stuff like this, it means she doesn't respect you. It means the relationship is over. So you shouldn't continue it. All right. I think we're going to end the video there. Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, liking the videos, please uh, hit the sub, hit the bell for notifications. You're listening on the podcast. Give me a five-star review. Give me a follow. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Please remember to do all of the following. Like the video for the algorithm. Comment on the video. I respond to all comments and I'll give you a heart. Subscribe and hit the bell so you can see my content on your feed. Check out all of my content on other platforms. It spreads the reach of the channel. YouTube, bit.ly slash Helios YouTube. Rumble, bit.ly slash Helios Rumble. My blog is realheliosblog.com. My podcast, bit.ly slash Helios Podcast. My Patreon, patreon.com slash the Helios Blog. You can also support the show at bit.ly slash Helios Donations and buy my books at bit.ly slash Helios Books. Thank you so much for all of your support.